Yo, listen, dog, you do not want it. I show up at your front door, knock not on it, it, leave. You messed it up. All no, you were supposed to finish. That's why I looked at it. Yo, I'm laughing because you look like a nervous teenager giving a speech. That's exactly. <laughs> I show up Yo. to his crib. I show up to his house. All right, you do it then. I'll knock. You do it. Then. Not, listen, not, dog, not, you do not want it. Not, you know, how, you, I know, how you doing your own quote? I said, listen, dog, you do not want it. Uh -huh. I show up to your front door. Knock on it. Nah. Is that how you did it? X marks the spot on it. Leave. Phone call. Have an airplane dropped on it. Piss on the remains. Stomp on it. Rip and dance. March, March on, on it. Leave. Come back half ten years later and build a mosque on it. Oh, oh, hell, why y'all niggas playing me? Studio uh who's and eyes in that joint? That's what happened. Nigga said, no, no, you turn it from mm, to, no, that ain't what happened. They ain't go. Hey, as soon as I finished, nigga started carrying me around the air and shit. Nigga. That's a fact, Bobby. That, that was the second the round, battle was oh over. God. Nigga, judges came in, started going like this and shit. It was crazy. I think that was the second round. You had to be. <laughs>
your pops is a legend not only in Jersey in the contact sports game mm -hmm. and really in the business game as far as a promoter. Like your dad discovered Manny Pacquiao. He did. You know what I'm saying? Promoted Roy Jones. He did do that. Was a bodyguard for Muhammad Ali. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Was was definitely he, he's like a karate master of some of some level. Yeah, he was a karate master. You know what I'm saying? And um yeah, and a lot of your brothers grew up uh boxing on an amateur level. Did any of them ever make it pro? I had two brothers that are pro boxers and my cousin was a pro boxer. Um my father was a promoter. I started to train later, but I got more into coaching, so I enjoy contact fighting sports. I and then I found out I learned I like more than just boxing. I like uh striking in general. So I got into kickboxing and all that. Shout outs to um my man Paul, you know him. Paul 5X. Uh we did his first uh amateur fight like in 2020. And even I was thinking about taking an amateur fight just to say I did it. But I was supposed to take it in 2020. Then the world almost ended. I took it as a sign from God. I was like, yeah, I'm getting to this podcast. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, uh, I have extensive history with uh, fighting. Like, you, It's funny you say, con why did you use the word contact sports? Because I know you're into the MMA stuff now. So mm -hmm. I wanted to be all encompassing. It's combat sports. Contact sports is like football, football or something like that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get it right. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I hate this nigga. <laughs> yeah, combat sports is in general is just something that my family's always been a part of. So like, um, my father, if I could brag on that that brother, he uh, he joined the Nation of Islam. What's your father's name? Murad Muhammad. Uh, his first his name was Paul Five X because okay. he was the fifth Paul at the uh, mm -hmm. temple. So he didn't know his last name, so they gave him the X. You seen the you right. seen the uh, Mal Malcolm X thing. Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. And so he became Paul 5X. They policed themselves, so they wouldn't count on the white man for anything. So my father dropped out of high school in ninth grade, and he went to school at the Nation of Islam. And they taught him how to hustle, but not like hustle like drugs and all that, because they didn't believe in that. But he would sell jewelry. He would sell newspapers. He ended up opening three barbershops. He had three restaurants, all this kind of stuff. And... um. Also, you had to learn how to fight. So he was in the FOI. Those are the dudes you see with the bow ties and they do the security and everything. So he had to learn how to fight. So once he learned how to fight, he ended up becoming security for Muhammad Ali or Cassius X at the time. And then he went and traveled the world and realized like, yo, this is beautiful. I want to keep doing this. But he wanted to make the real money and the people who make the real money is the promoters and all that. So he started promoting boxing and all that. So that's how he got into it. And actually, if you ever seen the movie, I think it's Undisputed. It got Vin Rames and it got, um, what's the man? Dark Skin Dude went to jail for not paying his taxes. No, Wesley, Wesley Snipes. Snipes. Wesley Snipes, yeah. yeah. That it's movie. That's how you describe it. I know. Terrible. Yeah, Blade. well, I mean, Blade. I, Blade. we used to say the blackest Nino, nigga in America, Nino. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the blackest nigga in America? Oh, yeah, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> See, he lost his title. He, he lost his title. Uh, but, yeah, that movie is based on what my father did. Oh, wow. So, in the movie, Vin Reigns is the champion, and he goes to jail, and then they fight in the jail, whatever like that. So, my father actually promoted a fight inside a Rawway prison, mm. and he brought the champion in to actually fight a prisoner who was incarcerated and was actually ranked in the in uh, one of them things, IBF, something like that. So my father did that. And again, which is why I respect your, your, your business acumen or just your ability to do the things you see, he's just a believer in that. If you ask him to break it down, like how you did that, he couldn't tell you. The only thing he'll say is like, I believed in God and I believe that if I... If I was fueled by God, I could do whatever I wanted to do. And so that was mo uh, motivated by Muhammad Ali. Because you would ask Muhammad Ali, why are you so great? And he'd be like, because I got God. Don't you know I'm God? Don't you know I got God on my side? That's how he would feel. So my father would go out and make these things happen. He would just show up, talk, all the personality in the world. My father couldn't read, really. He couldn't really read. Like when I was four years old, I used to help him pronounce words and spell words. He could barely read because he dropped out in ninth grade. And he said like, when he was in school, he didn't see a reason for it. So he, he barely did whatever, he barely did his work. But when people gave him a purpose and then he wanted to better himself. So he said, that's what the nation of Islam was for him. So I remember he used to say Japan, 
<laughs> I'd be like, that is Japan. He was talking about oh, that country, Japan. Yeah, yeah. He used to, he had this speaking spell, like a big red thing. I remember he used to be on the airplane and it's wild loud, like spell Japan or some shit. And people in the back be all mad. He was doing dirt, dirt, dirt. It dare him to say something. My father's hands is like bigger than this sign right here. Like his hands is bigger than a frying pan and the knuckles, each knuckle is like, Got like the same way you got calluses right here. He got calluses on his knuckles from punching bricks and punching the wall and shit like that. So that's how tough he was. And he just took that toughness and that hustle and combined it with a belief in himself. And he accomplished greatness, millions upon millions of dollars. But you know, that tax man come knocking. Sometimes mm. college is good for something. You know what I mean? Sometimes the white man could teach you something. Mm. Nobody told him about them taxes. So by the time I came around, he didn't have as much money anymore, but he said that's what kept motivating him to hustle. So he would go back and get it. So he eventually promoted a fight between Mike Tyson and Razor Ruddick. Mm. He shout outs to Pensacola, Florida, where basically I grew up. He uh, hooked up with Roy Jones Jr. He did that whole portion that y'all probably know Roy Jones from. It was my father promoting him. He went and discovered Pacquiao because he went all over the world. He's best friends with the ex-president of the Philippines because he basically put them on the map, which is wild to say. I'm sure that a Filipino is going to be upset when they hear that. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga from Newark put the Philippines on the map. Yeah, my nigga, like everybody knows y'all for Pacquiao. So yeah, he did a lot of he did a lot of shit. He continues to do a lot of things. Now he has, funny enough, he was doing his own radio program. So when I told him I was doing Ox Sampson Speaks, it, the name comes from. Uh, Muhammad Speaks, the newspapers he used to sell. Yeah. So my podcast yeah. is called Ox Sampson Speaks. And I told him that he was all filled with pride and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and he, he loves it. The fact, I almost got, what's that shit you put me on? OTX Boxing? Yeah. Almost took a role with them promoting and um, gathering fighters for them. I ended up not getting it. But I told my father about that. He was so elated, elated like, oh, you going to walk in my footsteps and all that. I tell him about the battle rap. Nobody listens to my battles or promotes my music more than my father. It was so crazy to me. He'll call me up out the blue. Can you send me that link where you was doing the thing? Where you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, where the girl, where you touch the girl on the butt? Send me that link. <laughs> <laughs> and I sent him the music video and shit. So yeah, shout out to them, man. So uh, since you mentioned battle rap, I want to um, bring it somewhere real quick. And PC, I want you to speak to this. Like, explain to us like why you left battle rap because i always like to hear the perspective of like we always see like the people who blew up off of it and the people who got millions of views off of it but you don't really see like the frustrations behind the scenes and like people actually talking about the bumps and the road to their journey like yeah i was young when i left battle rap i was like maybe 26 something like that and i would say young more so immature so in hindsight i would say that with anything that's worth having is gonna come struggle with it, right? So at the time, I felt like I was trying, I was getting played and I was like, I'm not the one to be played. So before I, I let you play me, I'll just walk away. In hindsight, I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. But who are you not to have to deal with these type of things? Like most artists that make it have to go through that struggle, sidestep it, dodge and weave and make it through there. Me, I just got the hell out real quick. I'm so disappointed in the fact that I started when I was, I've been battle rapping since I was a kid, but I started doing this shit when I was like 24, 20, and I'm seeing the same exact issues over and over again. And wow. nobody really can I can, I can speak to that. So basically ahead, like- I've been interrupting you a lot. No, it's all good. So- I ain't gonna interrupt you no more. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this nigga talk. <laughs> Nah, but as, as somebody that's been knee deep in battle rap for a while, I can say like I've written proposals to companies to get sponsored where I've explained why the business of battle rap is severely underdeveloped. And it's not about the fact that there's uh, businesses and entities getting money. I'm looking at like, look how fast once Dana White got control of the UFC, like how big they blew up to where I'm talking about. Is they have international stars like mm -hmm. WWF. They have international stars. And I, people, I feel like there's people in battle rap that everybody in hip hop might know, but they're not like actually, like battle rap has never produced the A-list celebrity. You know what I'm saying? But I think they actually could. But I feel like a lot of times with these battles, we worry more about balancing the budget and stuff like that. You know how many times somebody came to me and said, I got X hundred thousand dollars for a battle 
and the and the production was the very last thing they worried about. I had a dude come to me, man. This dude did threw a battle in Arizona. He like, yo, my dad left me all this money. He had some type of fund or whatever. It was hundreds of thousands of dollars. He's like, yo, I'm gonna do a battle. And I was like, yo, give me like 10 racks. I'm gonna get everybody for you cheaper. I'm gonna get you the most low cost and effective venue. I'm gonna be able to hire the production team for you. I'm gonna do this, this and that. What he do? Nah, I don't want to pay you money because I want to be cool with the rappers. <laughs> and I'm gonna go. <laughs> he went and paid John John the, the Don and shit, man. But yeah, he probably did for that one. I can't remember. But, <laughs> but uh, but like for real though, like I think that you know what I'm saying. They get cool with the rappers. They overpay everybody, lose all their money. Oh, they marks. They they don't count. Now, they money marks. No, but no, but right. that but that's what I, what I will say is URL has stood the test of time as far as that goes. But I remember there was a point in time where like. I don't even know. I'm going to call him Voldemort because I don't, I don't want to say his name okay, in front yeah. of you on the podcast and everything. But basically, like, I had a conversation with him about URL. And I was like, yo, y'all need to get involved in streaming. That's where the money is. And his stance was like, I don't know if this was him talking to him, speaking for the whole company. He's like, URL will never get involved in streaming. And I was like, yo, but that's where the business is going. So I felt like them getting into streaming was a little bit delayed. And I think these are, like, points that he's speaking to. Because I feel like there's other, like, URL you know speculation but they made a lot of money off of the caffeine deal right but it's also like sometimes when you get a lot of money like mentally you can sit back and chill a little bit like you don't have to make all these super big advancements and jump over all these hoops and do all this extra stuff that you don't necessarily have to do but i think maybe that's what's need to be done to get those a-list celebrity battles G get the 15th biggest person on, on a battle rap league to still sell out the venue the way the number one person can but i think that like URL did a good job when they put money into like getting people on billboards and stuff like I don't know if that was caffeine URL I don't know whose money that was URL did good when they made the app now they got their own flow of money that's independent of a sponsorship or anything like that but I feel like there's another level I'm not, I'm not going to give away all the sauce but basically like there's marketing things you, you could take Jada Nightwing for instance right you can put him next to certain people that will when we talk about like crowd manipulation and promotion and stuff like that that will make him seem way bigger than he might be and might bring more people in the venue just to see him because somebody co-signed him and stuff like that but i think those are things that the battlers have to rely on doing themselves so because we know what the game is you know you got you can't be lazy you got to give up get up off the couch you got to right. get it yourself but i also think it, it has been done on certain times like, yeah Luke, yeah it has Luke's been done yeah. vets was successfully pulling that off yeah yeah, like yeah, yeah guys in front of in, in front of veterans and building their profile it has been done plenty of times and i also think a lot of things that we would love to do and we would all love to see if we could do it at the snap of a finger and it happens, it would be beautiful. But a lot of times also, you got to remember, a lot of these big companies that will invest and give that type of money, it's kind of hard to get that type of money when you're dealing with the content that's being said also and the stuff that's being said on stage. So that makes it tricky too. But so it's, a, it's so many variables. Fuck right. them. You know, you know and, what I think one of the biggest variables is, and I feel like this is probably something that doesn't make sense to you, is that it not, it's not judged. So when you liken it to something like boxing, you have a winner. You could say, this person is the face, this person is the champion. When you can sit, when a crowd that has no idea what they're watching, but it looks interesting and they sit down and watch it for the first time, oh, why is this dude the best? But you know that also the biggest problem with judging a battle is, well, now I don't want to take him because he lost to so-and-so. And I beat so and so. No, nah, but I, I get that. But so imagine if people apply, applied that to other things. Imagine if like, like, uh, Venus Williams didn't didn't go against whoever because she lost a Wimbledon to this person, and right. I'm undefeated. No, I don't nonsense. have to go against right. that. That's absolute nonsense, and nobody cared about that before. But it, I can understand why the it makes it makes the storyline interesting, though. Right. I can you know understand, but you can understand why they don't want to do that, right? But also, these are the same Negroes that get in the battle. And be showing up unprepared. You know I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's you, so it's you like know, you know I, I most battle rappers are in real life be corny. If they half the time they don't get me started. But niggas be corny and it, half the time they can't really the person they present across on on screen is not the real person that they are. So let's just keep it that way. And that's half, rap in general. That's rap in general. Yeah, but yeah, but in it there's a certain portion of it though where people thought I mean, don't get me up here like the old nigga screaming at everything and saying everything is different now. But you at a now. certain, <laughs> I am kind of old now. <laughs> but at a certain point, like as the battle rapper, at least at the very least, we expected you to be you. Mm -hmm. And I think now, 
too many people are looking up like he said looking at other people's bags and i don't want to I, I don't want to face him because nah, you don't want to face him because you know you might lose him right. if if we saw all these people that they had to go on a card and that was going to be judged half of them just went and take the battle right. they just wouldn't do it because they don't need that stress and then to, i just want to speak to this point because i don't and maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Please do. This I'm is what we it, do here. I'm gonna say it anyway because a lot, like my, a lot of my partners, don't want to say this mm -hmm. publicly, and I've been trying to get them to say this. A lot of the people that y'all are emotionally invested in, but they be complaining about what they don't have and the bad business has been done, are the same people who have been taking free money for years. We talking about yeah. the stuff you don't get a chance to see. When you're saying, and, and niggas don't want to put niggas on blast because then they feel like, well, then that's going to look distasteful when if we say, say that. When yeah. you say free money, what you mean? Meaning like, yo, man, I'm fucked up. Can I just get $5,000? Or you done blew all your money on designer and now you need a, 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 a $10,000 oh. loan and you're promising, well, I'm, I'm going to make up for it this time. And then you don't do it. And then Christmas comes around. It's like, yo, I'm, I'm late on my rent and my kids need this. And then niggas cash you out. Just because like you my man, here, hold it down. But like tighten up your finances, like do better with, with your spending habits. Mm -hmm. And then these to be the same people who be like, yo, niggas doing bad business. I want to battle on yo, so they won't get me so and so. Like, yo, I was there when you were sleeping on so and so when so and so couch, when you was fucked up, or when you had this legal issue and nigga had to bail you out. Mm -hmm. I got them, I got a phone call. I get them phone calls all the time. Yo, bro, what you think? Should I help some homie out? He in the gym. I know this gonna he ain't gonna really live up. I'm like, is it gonna hurt you? How much is it? It was like four thousand. Man, just give it to him. I agree with That's you. That's the part of the game y'all don't get a chance to see, like the fucking charity. I know. I, I, agree I, with I you. actually know. Bro. You know get, what I'm saying? Niggas get online and pretend. And then these niggas go online like, yo, so and so do bad business and make jokes about niggas like, yo, so and yo. That's what I be trying to say. Even the whole funny, like the shit this nigga was going on, Beasley's Playhouse. Man, all the time when it's smoke, it ain't no fire. Sometimes it's just niggas hating. Fucked up, stressed out. Beasley's playhouse. No, no, don't even get it. Yeah, we'll, we'll no, whatever. Not. I don't, man, listen, it's yeah. all bullshit. These is niggas like coming to the crib, fucked up, needing somewhere to stay, crashing on the couch, ordering food, ten dollars short. Like nigga, don't act like don't don't get me to talk because I I tell it Wait, for real how it really what, is. Uh, basically, referring to is there's fans they blog and. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, try to manipulate fuck them too. Crowd. First of all, a lot of battle rappers are pussy. A lot of battle rappers yeah. will get online and pretend. A lot of them will lie to you and pretend like, oh, they're just like you got niggas down the street that will beg for money and don't really be broke, just don't want to, you know what I mean? I know niggas like- Just don't want to work. I ain't even no, going to say his name. Don't, don't, I ain't even going to say his name, but there's a nigga I know that will ask you for money and got <laughs> money in his pocket. So the, the battle rappers is trash too. But when I, the only thing, don't get me wrong. I'm only talking about the business right now because that's what the question well, you asked me. Like but saying, a lot of battle rappers are trying to have the gripes are the ones that, okay, this is what happened. I give you a few loans on your off season. I don't got no opponents for you. Boom. I know you still need to sustain a living. You right. don't want to go get a job because you feel like you're too famous to get a job for right. whatever reason. And you have so I'm going to cash you out. Boom, 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 boom. And then when I really find an opponent that's, that I feel like is worthy of battling you, you want this X amount that I'm like, but what about this when I gave you when you wasn't battling? Now you're like, Oh, niggas counting favors and all of that. Like they yeah, feel like they supposed to just favors. keep that and nothing. We're never even supposed to discuss that. Or, again. or right, a, a nigga country. might get a nigga might get like, let's just say you get seven thousand this battle, and now your next battle come around, you like I want twenty. Mm -hmm. Wait, where did this jump come from? What happened last battle that made you jump this high? Hey, I gotta put that on paper. If you give a nigga five thousand dollars. I mean, it should be eight to five thousand dollars. It's gonna come out your next battle, whatever, whatever oh, so we pay for the thing. Niggas got contracts, but they won't show them. But then if we show them, then what does that mean? This that's the thing. Cool. And if that's niggas, what I was about. That was my next question. Come out and show them, then it turns into, oh, y'all file, y'all show them niggas contracts, y'all niggas, no, yo, y'all bugging listen, out. Fuck them because they stupid. You lose either way. If you if you part, I'm not. I don't, you represent URL. Yes, I didn't okay. know that before we started that. But if but you it's represent all good. URL, if you wanted to. I know, it's all good, but all good. I'm saying if you represent URL and you the company and you willing to show the contract, if you willing to display contracts, I don't care what somebody's saying online, that promotes better business. 
everybody gets to see what everybody's making and everybody gets to know you're making this because this is what happened you're making well, this because what, 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 what if somebody usually the company doesn't want to show the contract cap gap between somebody who feels like they put in the work and somebody at the time. then that's on another issue that's on you though there's so that, many variables that's on you yeah. that's what i'm saying you listen in this world you got people who are can generate a certain amount of money so they're worth a certain amount at the end of the day, you gotta sell yourself, and many, you only you only worth what you can negotiate. How many fights before you can call out Javante? It, it, there is no amount of fights. There, there is, is no not. magic number. He has so to just, just to build up the public. You have to. You have to. Like the reason if why he wants you, he can he can fight. You. The re the reason why old boy, the Mexican boy, got the fight with Javante. Nah, um, Ryan Garcia. Oh yeah, is because he built up his profile online. And then it had nothing to do with him fighting. Had nothing to do with him fighting. So in battle rap, you think I should come in two, three fights in and call out Moot? Yeah, you can. You can if, if you, you want to. Up enough. But you think what? What should? I, what? What did I do to Yo, make? But, but I, I don't know like, why you I'm want to battle Moot. I'm gonna tell you though. something. And here's where it's trash. Why you want to battle Moot though? The, if he gonna take up half the budget. Don't you want some of that pay? Gonna boot, uh, once I battle Mook, it's gonna boost his profile. And yeah, it's gonna boost, boost my profile, and I'm never gonna go below this number ever again. This People man. just think they're supposed to come in the game. I beat, I don't know who they beat. Let me say some uh, who you will have to battle on to come up. I beat Soul Severe. <laughs> I don't know I, that I is. I beat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll be, crazy, I'll be Hansel. Now I want Mook. Like I feel like I'm. Yeah, I, I think I, it's, it's a lot of ego in battle rap. Yeah, it is. In any competitive sport, yeah. right? And um, can 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 URL? Let's say I'm pro artist. Let's be very clear. Can URL have more structure? Hell yeah. We have them conversations all the time. But is it bad business being done? That's what I want to speak to. No, there's no bad business being done. I don't, I don't agree with bad business being done. Yeah, it's no there bad probably is done. bad promotion. Now, that's a totally different thing. But even that, it's like everybody know when we have an event. No, I don't I don't feel as far as like, because all the events usually sell out. Yeah, yeah with events, the events I, but no, but I no feel matter like who we have. Promotion at like, for specific as, a, artists. as an artist, as an individual, like right. for easy to get that big and for it to be like, cause that's the reason why I would I would agree with bad promotion because for a certain ra uh, rapper to climb the ranks like a Gichi Gotti or like a Easy, it's like so far in between where there's actually a lot of good guys that have come out prior to or in between that time frame that haven't reached that plateau that those guys have. But they should have. There shouldn't. It shouldn't. You shouldn't be an anomaly if you come out and become a Geechee Gotti or easy to block captain. Right. How many battles do you think you need to do and kill in order to get to Geechee or easy to block captain? But that's what I. I can also say that what URL did with those guys that they don't do normally is they gave them the elite competition. So like right out the gates, niggas was seeing. K Shine, T Rex, Math, all of all of the niggas that like. If you are a real fan of uh, battle rap, if you were to beat these guys, you're gonna get up in the rankings quick, quickly. It's these other guys that are very good. So, let's say Foots or Foots or whomever. Those guys, they don't get matched with Tay Rock that's and all of them. That that's that's, that's. But at the same time, like you said. Um, battle Rock rap has is, a line. He he has he can <laughs> he, has he can line, choose right. if he want to battle flex right. or whatever. Everybody is not gonna take that risk if they feel like you're a breath of fresh air or right. feel like then nah hell no. Son got something that the game has never seen before. And if you want to call me soft or whatever, my fans are gonna root for me and make it seem like. PC ain't never running from no fights and this, that, and the third. I really do not have to battle you. Right. So I can keep you below here to where you'll never elevate to where the fans will ever want to see us battle. So I can remain still be elite and getting paid tip top. And you're, you'll just be complaining that nobody ever wants to see you or they scared to battle you. And my fans are never going to agree that I'm scared to battle you. They're just gonna say he don't even watch you. That's right. what they're a gonna of, say. A lot, of, a lot of the elite artists, like the veteran battle rappers, battle the new guys once they run out of matches. Mm -hmm. Like it's nobody else to battle. Yeah. So it's like now I gotta take these guys. 
So you got to think of yeah. like all the people that Geechee and Easy battled on their come up. Do you know what I'm saying? It was like, well, who else? These guys want a payday, and there's nobody for them to really. Yeah, battle. you right. So then they'll take these guys. He's the hottest new nigga. Right. So I want him, and then mm -hmm. they, as he keeps going, more people want him. Like, I'm gonna be the one to kill him. So it's, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's so many variables, man. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to like put your finger on it. So, go ahead. Nah, I was I was gonna ask you. Um, tell us uh, R.I.P. Past Day, but tell us your Past Day story. Oh, Past Day, that was my man's. Um, you were one of his favorite battles. Yeah, it's That's crazy how so that mad works. That you stop battling. It's crazy how that works. I was a few. Uh, I had a few like high name, big name cosigns at the time. At the time, it was heavy. You've been involved with URL the, from the since the jump. Man. Before okay. it was URL. Okay. Was Smack DVD. So there, you remember there was a certain time where it was like grind time versus URL right. type shit. And the fans was like, you either with the street niggas or AK the black uh -huh. niggas, or you with the nerds the or whatever. Backpackers. Which always offended me because you could accuse me of a lot, but you ain't never accused me of being a nerd. But <laughs> it is what it is. I had to accept that you can't, you dance with the people that brought you and shit, right? So there was a certain time when I felt like, okay, if you showcase these certain, because Grind Time's thing is they allowed everybody in. Everybody got a chance and you got the same airtime. And it used to be you put it on a YouTube channel, everybody go there. If you leave it on that main page, that shit's gonna hit 500,000. You literally could make an artist or break him. You could show his worst moment, his hard moment, his, his best moments. And I thought that what URL did better was just quality control. They would put the best battles and put the, the people in the best light and promote them better. At the time, I thought Grind Time was like, yo, you putting this nigga. <laughs> Can't remember his rhymes. He fucking rhyming dumb words with each other. So you you felt like when every time I battled, I felt like I had to like go out of my way to differentiate myself from them niggas while at the same time not crossing over into... I grew up listening to Beanie Siegel. You know what I'm saying? I saw the video you quote with his the best diss record of all time. I agree. <laughs> Kiss die on a holiday. Okay, but <laughs> anyway... You know what I'm saying? But I also had to lean away from the URL shit because my audience would be like, oh, he got gun bars. Oh, he said anything violent. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm, what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you what type of person I am, bro. Like, being from Grand Town, I used to tell out, go to URL. You'll do way he better. He did used to tell me, go to URL. I was like, I'll, I was like, I'll call all them niggas and, and that, tell you to go to URL. That's what, I, that's what he gets on me about because I just didn't believe him. I was like, I don't rap like them niggas. Them niggas rap, you know, like... Like this, I saw the street battles, T Rex, and all that. The conviction. But I used to rap from a standpoint of like, I could fuck you up with my hands, and I'm gonna crack these jokes. And if you get offended by the jokes, what you gonna do about it? That's how you. That's how I used to write from that perspective. That's how I used to battle. We used to street battle. That's how I used to battle. So I'm gonna say whatever I got to say, and what you gonna do about it? You gonna stand there? You gonna take it? It's gonna be your turn. That's gonna be the end of it. So he used to say, oh, "I'm telling you, they would feel you on URL." I thought it was too wide of a gap. Then there's certain battlers, Soulcon, Hollow, that would cross that gap and be able to switch audiences back and forth because their style was just able to do that. I didn't realize I had a style like that until he told me until way later. But then I got a call to perhaps the biggest name or the biggest, the the biggest example of a nigga who could cross back and forth, Past Day. Past Day basically hit me up and was quoting my lines to me. This was blowing my mind because at the time, you don't even know niggas is listening to you. You don't even know people's watching you in other countries and shit. And he was like, yo, Ock, when you said this, that, and the third, that was crazy. Why'd you stop battle rapping? And I'm like, well, first of all, I didn't even know you knew who I was. But then I told him the story. He's like, fuck all that. Just come back. And um, he was such the biggest example of a person who could cross over back and forth. I always looked at it and I was like, man, I probably could have did that. So a couple years before he passed, he hit me up on my, um, he sent me a video in my DM. It was just basically like at a bar and he was just spitting some shit that I wrote. He was spitting it back to me in the video. And then he was like, yo, that was crazy. I, hit me up, man. I, you know, sometimes I just get the feeling to reach out to certain people and we haven't talked. We don't go back and forth all the time, but your, one of your rhymes just came to my head and I decided to hit you up. I hit him up like maybe the next day, like, yeah, here's my number, whatever. Never talked to him again. Then he passed away maybe maybe two years after that, and I found that video. It made me feel bad because I basically what I was saying in the beginning, I feel like I gave away my the thing God blessed me with. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like God blessed me with the ability to captivate a room. God blessed me with the personality to stand out in the crowd and shit. And I felt like, in hindsight, I felt like I gave it away. Then I started thinking about all the different times I met Pat Stay, all the different times we talked. I don't think I ever broke through that first layer of like, I'm a fan of you and you a fan of me. And I'm just amazed by that. Like, what's up, dog? Like, yeah, man, you know, I fuck with you. And that's it. Um, I always feel bad that he passed before we could ever like make it a true friendship. Like to the point where, you know, like me and him type got to type friendship. I think it could have went there because he was such a kind hearted, good person. But, you know, I was just doing my own thing. But yeah. Pat Stay, that story means a lot to me. And then, you know how it is, people go online with somebody past and they want to say R.I.P. to the nigga, and really they just want you to know that they knew him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's almost like self-promotion type shit. Mm -hmm. Me and him talk about that all the time. Like, the real nigga in you kind of be like, I don't, I don't need to go online and show the whole world how me and this guy were friends. I don't want the attention to come on me type shit. Like, I want people to, to honor his memory. But, like... I think a lot of people don't realize like Pat Stay, his life's mission was to like forego violence. He said when he was growing up, he used to fight all the time. He had to fight for everybody. And he didn't just want to do that. Like what it is to be a man, how you how you move in a crowd where it where 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 people expect you to to be aggressive or expect you to to do these things. And how he wanted to just change that whole perspective of what being a man was to the point where he got into the shit with, uh, what's the dude, uh, Calico. He got into the shit with Calico, and he had his brother right there, and he was basically talking about it. He was like, yeah, you know, we could have moved something if we wanted to move something, but I don't want it to be about that. I don't want that to be attached to my name. He used to talk about how, you know, I want to set examples for my son. I don't want him doing all the same shit. And he's like, why do we got to be aggressive all the time? Why can't we just... We, we're living our dreams and doing what we want to do. Why we got to be aggressive? So for him to go out the way that he did is kind of disgusting to me because that's the exact opposite of what he wanted to invite in his life. You know what I'm saying? So for him to have such a violent death is crazy. But yeah, me and him, we just had a... I felt like he was a, a, a better friend to me than I was to him. And so I feel a little fucked up about that now that he passed away. And I mean, that's how it always is. You get to reflecting on things never said and never did. But I feel like Pat Stay was a better friend to me than I was to him. And I, he never told me, but I guess he must have figured out a watch anyway. But he actually battled DNA and he quoted one of my lines in it. That's kind of like disaster, the line we said earlier. Mm -hmm. Disaster actually used my line when he battled um, Swave Seven in New York. His real deal actually used one of my lines when he battled uh, the Saurus, and they hit me up and let me know, like, yo, I fuck with that. I'm like, can you mind if I use that? Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So Pastay never hit me up and and talked to me about the line that he used. So I never saw that battle. I never saw him battle DNA till after he passed. And then I saw that part where he shouted me out, and I felt like the whole time he was trying to get me to come back to battle rap or get me to come back and display my gift and all that and use what God gave me. So... Yeah, shout outs to Pat Stay. I don't know if he knew what kind of effect he would have on me or whatever, but I feel like he was trying his best to have a positive effect on me. And it's crazy that a stranger that from a whole nother country that just happens to be in the same realm that you are would go out their way to do all that. Nah, but on some real shit, it's six degrees of separation because like a lot of people don't know this, but like before Pat Stay even came into battle rap and started battling in Canada, you know what I'm saying? I knew about him and Hollahan because people in Canada told me about them. Like I went out the way to find Hollahan. Yeah, you know I'm saying I went out the way to hunt down Past Day. So a lot of them. That's why he's like, direct. I, how am I going to make it to Rondo the Battle? I made it my business to be like, nah, you have to go. If you can't get get to the states, you have to go out there. So what I'm saying is like me and Pat had a lot of conversations about you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it's like it's not what you think as far as like feeling like a fucked up friend or anything like that because he wouldn't even carry it like that. Nah, he you wouldn't. Know what I'm saying he was just inspired by you. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. some of the uh, performances you had, and he was just kicking back the love. That's the type of person he was. And that's the type of person that Pat Stay was, right? If he fucked with you or he felt any type of positivity towards you, whether you was a bare stranger or not, he would uh, he would go out his way to show you and display it. So what's crazy is I direct slept on my couch in 2009. <laughs> 
fucking I've known this man since since forever, it feels like, right? I when I first met him, I was at we was at the lunch table at UCF, beating on the table freestyling. He walked up, said, Yo, can I freestyle? I'm like, sure, nigga. I, I let the nigga freestyle. He start rapping about the solar system <laughs> and all the planets and in, incorporating the freestyle. To this day I think he wrote it and shit. No, that true. was important back then. I don't, yeah. Niggas like, so what? He wrote it. But back then, no, if you freestyle, freestyle it had to be down. off the top That's of your head. That's a fact. This nigga was nice. Dead nice. The bit, the most open secret in battle rap is how nice the rec is at battle rap. Off the top, freestyling off the top of his head. So he's just he, he's he's that nigga, right? So he lives and breathes this battle rap shit. He went and found Pat Stay on out of nowhere he went and called hollow to dawn hollow to dawn was on a train going somewhere else about to probably commit a crime and go back to jail or some shit and this nigga direct was like hey nigga you need to come do this battle you know what i'm saying he put he put he brought hollow to dawn back in the game like yo just, to me the parallels between him my father went and got manny pacquiao my father went and got a nigga in jail and made him ch champion you know what I'm saying? My father protected all this shit. This nigga here, almost every name you can name, there's a story about how they had to come to direct and help. And some of your favorites came to direct to help write their shit. Like, how should I approach this battle? How should I do that? I'm in hit, direct to hit me up. I'm I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I feel like I'm the in the Godfather. You had Consigliere's. You had the Godfather. And you had the nigga that helped. That, that was me. I was he'd be on the phone like, yo, man. So should I do this? Should I do this? Yo, do this, do this. All right, bet, bet, bet. <laughs> so right. sometimes he was doing the deals right there in my kitchen or getting shit done right there in my kitchen or some shit. So, so many battle rappers owe this nigga so much and don't ever say a word. Don't ever speak a word of gratitude. And he's never going to ask for it. Because I'm the type of nigga, I'll go grab my shit. I'll be like, yeah, I did that. I did that. I did that. Yeah, and my nigga did this. Don't forget that. But he's not that type of guy. So I ain't going to put it out like that. But the type of guy that Pat Stay was, he going to let you know. To me, he immortalized direct. I don't know about everybody else, but to you know, because I'm from the grind time side of things, certain battles are classics to me that may not be classics to the general public nowadays. So Pat Stay versus Hollihan, to me, you can't write the history of battle rap without that battle. And I believe that's the same battle. He goes on there and tells the story about how Direct inadvertently created the written battle uh, time period, the way we got things now, by watching Pat stay. He was using that to big up himself, but he didn't have to mention Direct. You know what I'm saying? Then I think he did it again on the URL stage. At the Drake joint, yeah. At the Drake joint. Mentioned my man in the Drake joint. Just that that's how Pat Stay was. He was going, if he had love for you, he's going to put on for you. I want I want to say something too, right? Yeah. About like putting battle rappers on, marketing, people listening and stuff like that. Yo, PC, man. PC has one of the most incredible finishing moves in battle rap. And this nigga refuses to use it, man. Yo, hold on, let me see I, if I, I can I guess what you're talking about. Just go ahead, man. We, no, me and him have never spoke about this. Okay, so I might be wrong if we never even talked about it. Cause the thing I know PC from is like he says, <laughs> he said, "Baby, what is this about?" <laughs> that, <basically laughs> is that what you're talking about? <laughs> he said he tells a story. No, this is all right. Here's the background. PC battled a dude named Chicago's own, right? Chicago's own is trying his damnest. Shout out to Chicago's PC. own. He nigga. just this nigga. Who the fuck is that? He he got no bread like that new KFC chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. You take three mm -hmm. L's before every W. You a cheater girl. Mm -hmm. you know, he was trying every line he could think of that niggas never said before. Nigga PC come in is like, nigga, let me tell you what your bitch about. Just made up a whole story about how he was in the closet. Nigga came in. He, he thought he thought PC's red. draws was his draws. You know what I'm saying? Fake story. <laughs> All fake. So it's cool. We can do fake stories. Yo, yo, hell yeah, you can do fake yeah, stories. You know what I'm talking you about? Man, he know, he know yeah. what I'm so <laughs> lies is done, right? Oh, that's a. Sounds good, right? For future references. That's a Drake fan. <laughs> <laughs> a nigga start talking about fake stories. You a Drake fan? Do you remember? Lies is done. I'm just making sure. Nah. That nigga said, I, he said, I, he said, threw some flocker on, and I looked up and said, this nigga got my boxes on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yo, this nigga said, when um, the nigga, he was, he was like, when, when you be um, chaining your tricycle to the back porch, I'll be dipping up. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's what I'm saying. But nah, but for real though, I think you gotta like do that again. That's crazy. I think I, no, I really think that's a special move, bro. Then you do it like twice. I did it, yeah, to Saya and Chicago. Why won't you ever do that again, bro? That that I'm telling you from an outside perspective, niggas like that shit will go viral, bro. I, PC, it's I know big, it's bigger than the battle, yo. PC, I know you got bars. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I, I out of all the bars you said, that's the one I remember. That's the one I remember, man. It's the one that stuck out. And I think if you want to translate it to the Drake versus Kendrick shit, some that's what battling, like bat, people think battling is one thing. I'm telling you right now, if you go back and watch some of my battles, in my personal opinion, I don't think they translate. But I tell you what does translate is that motherfucking showmanship. Like when I'm in the battle and everybody's in the room, everybody's looking at me, nigga. Ain't nobody on their phone, everybody drinking. I hear people talking about, oh, they wasn't giving Drake a chance. Nigga, in battle rap, if I go to a club and motherfucking Drake is on stage and I'm battling, I'm about to say some shit that's going to make the crowd turn around. That's exactly what an MC is. So when battle rap, it ain't just about your bars. It ain't just about your delivery. It's all that. And my thing for me was like, the show got to keep going on. At no point in time, I want to be uh, boring. So if I choke, my choke going to be the greatest choke of all motherfucking time. Whoa. If I oh. tell it, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I, what I mean to say is if I can't remember my words, it's going to be the best forgotten verse it's never said. It's top five pauses of all time. No, listen, listen. Best joke ever. Yo, top five Yo, pauses. yo, I, I want to switch the topic real quick. New York, you, please do. So, um. You can edit that out. Yo. Right now. Right, switch the topic right now. Yo. Edit out all this laughing. Yeah. You got a lot of editing to do, man. But yo, so. Yo. yo. If I choke. <laughs> the best joke not the crowd joining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got our clip. Not the, not the crowd joining. Yo, me, but um, yo, so this Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul fight is going down, right? Oh, yeah. Man. Um, can you, just from you be, really being a fight expert, the way we talk about battles like is, is the way you really talk about fights. There um, you go. From now on, can, don't even introduce me as former battle rapper. None of that, man. Fight expert. I like that. Man. You got it. I All got right. you. No doubt. I got you. So Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson fights goes down. Um, who does everybody have winning? Like I see a lot of people that might be scared for Mike Tyson's health, saying he's too old to do something like this. He's definitely too old to be doing something like this, but he's on all the best steroids. He'll be all right. So it's but it's explain like well actually let's have a conversation about steroids, right? Right. Because I feel like there's banned substances from professional sports, mm -hmm. right? But we've had talks about. Some substances should probably be allowed, especially when you expect these athletes to do abnormal human activity. So what's banned is performance enhancing drugs. So there's a difference. Not all performance enhancing drugs are steroids. Not all steroids are performance enhancing. That's just how it goes. So there also are banned substances lists. So certain things you can't do right before your fight or right, like Coke can't be in your system. But that wasn't a, a rule. So in the early 1980s, niggas was doing coke and then getting sugar in the ring. Yeah, that's why they called him Sugar Ray. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was getting in the ring. Nah, that's not why they called him Sugar Ray. But he was doing coke. <laughs> 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 like, oh, whoa. <laughs> that was a fake battle rap story and shit. But yeah. <laughs> uh, but nah, he he was definitely doing coke though. And he, he'll tell you. He wrote it in his book. It's it's not like, you know, it's like the... um. The 80s, the 80s bulls, they was all getting high and doing all that type of shit. So performance enhancing drugs has been a part of boxing almost forever. And almost every name you can name has gotten tested or did whatever. The thing is, the sport of boxing doesn't want the fans to know about that shit. So they kind of sweep it under the rug. Um, that being said, steroids have gotten the rap that they got because at the at the beginning it was unregulated you niggas seen the fucking documentaries and shit don't act like i'm the expert but they got the rap that they got because it was marketed as all drugs is bad so smoking was bad doing these steroids was bad so it got the rap that they got and they used sports to kind of push that agenda across um however y'all like lebron james duncan y'all want to see lebron james play with Bronny? He was on that uh, Miami list when they raided the uh, hospital. No, he was I, on the list. I, I totally think I think he was on the list. I think sports would be so much better if they allowed everyone to do steroids. Like like especially football. These guys get hurt all the time. Like put right. them niggas on something, man. They own it. Let mm -hmm. them crash into each other and they break own each it, other's helmets. And shit. They own it though. They just saying be respectful. They saying hey, listen, do your steroids. Don't just do it all out in the open, man. Right. Like 
You know what I mean? Don't be dumb. Don't do it in the locker room while they're interviewing you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hide the needle marks, right. my nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's all they're saying. But but they basically allowed him to do it. Question, is Psalms illegal? One more time? It's like Psalms. Psalms. Nothing Remind like me what Psalms is. So it's like, it's not necessarily, it's like an oral steroid more than mm -hmm. anything. So, yeah, you have my, um, I have asthma. You know what I mean? No HIPAA. You know what I mean? Don't go around telling people this shit. But I got asthma. <laughs> and, um... My shit, my shit is steroids. That's literally steroids. Right. So yeah, you can have oral shit. It depends on what it does for you and why you're taking it. Okay. So what people don't know, if you got the right read, like you break your shit, you can get on steroids. Right. And then you can use it legally. Yeah, you can use it legally, yeah. If you get the doctor script for it, the problem is, is that once you see what it does for you, Conor McGregor, you don't want to stop the shit, my nigga. Like, I'm diesel right now. I could go all day. I could run and be recovered. That's the shit that they should let them use the shit that helps with recovery. The problem with athletes is you're asked to perform at this high level. In order to perform at that high level, you gotta train at that high level. In order to train at that high level, you have to go to sleep. Recover. You have to recover. These niggas don't got the time. They got uh, events, they got practice, they got to fuck uh, Instagram hoes. They got a lot of shit on their schedule, you know what I'm saying? So. This shit just allows Viagra them to recover. Viagra is like a performance enhancement drug also. Is it really? Viagra? Yeah. I mean... Well, I think by definition, I guess it would be. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's definitely performance enhancement. Yeah. It get, but you know, all it does is get your blood flow going. Blood. Take some ashwagandha, man. You don't need the Viagra. Man. So, but keys to success, right? So if you're Jake Paul's trainer, you're running a promotion over there. Like, how, how does he actually win? Jake Paul has two problems. One problem is he doesn't know how to fight backing up. Mike Tyson's going to rush him, and he, that's how Mike Tyson fights. He only knows how to fight one way. The reason why he still looks like he can do it, because you see the short little spurts where he does it, and he has that, he done did this motion 6,000 times mm -hmm. in the last two years. You know what I'm saying? There's, he's done it in count, uh, innumerable amount of times. Jake Paul does not fight well backing up because they taught him, uh, it's a simple bounce. I think the Russians do it, simple bounce. Ha ha one two. Ha ha one. Ha one. Ha one two. He catches people because he's fighting people that don't have much experience. He is athletic. He is probably also on steroids. He's definitely on steroids. <laughs> he is uh young. You know what I'm saying? So he can carry it. He can carry that style and he can if if he spars, I, and I know people who have sparred him. Uh, I mean, that's what my podcast is about. Shout out to Tapping In Podcast. We have Mike Perry on there, who is the bare knuckle champion and former UFC fighter. He sparred Mike Perry. What the one thing he said was, yeah, he was doing pretty good. Yeah, he he was getting in some good shots. And then around the third, fourth round, I decided, yeah, I'm tired of you winning. I'm about to press you. And he said the whole fight changed when I pressed him. They stopped the fight. Um, go back and look at how uh, Fury did good against him. One is that Jake Paul, he throws that jab and he tries to throw the body jab. When you throw the body jab, if you throw it right, it's hard to counter it. Floyd used to do it all the time. He doesn't know how to do it. His his position is off. So it's easy to be countered from that body jab. Um, if he throws that body jab wrong against Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson is going to use it to enter inside the, uh, the fucking range and he's going to make him pay for it. If he's still Mike Tyson, if so, he's still Mike, so there's Tyson. a chance that he could knock, knock him the Tyson fuck out. Coma. I mean, anybody could, that can hit. If I could teach um, the young lady right there, I could teach her how to knock Mike Tyson out. If you take a ten pound weight and you hold it up here, you drop it on your foot. What the fuck's gonna happen? It's gonna hurt real bad. It's only ten pounds. Take one pound weight and drop it from right here. All you need is weight force behind your weight. That's all you need. So yeah. If you get in the ring and you've been practicing for four or five years, you can hit somebody and knock them out. The problem is when you deal with a professional who's been practicing for just as long and knows how to knows what you're going to do before you do it, it's hard to knock them out. Is Mike Tyson the whole? This whole promotion is is Mike Tyson really too old for this shit? <laughs> Wait, That's but we really saw all. Like Roy Jones, it wasn't exciting. Not at all. That wasn't long ago. Not too much on Roy Jones, greatest fighter that ever lived. No, I'm Pensacola, just saying, Florida, Florida, where you at? Look, kind of like old and tired. And well, no, no, he's definitely washed. No, yeah. let's be honest, Roy. We go back. Right, I'm talking about just that match. You was washed, though, Roy. Right. Roy, you was washed. Like right? now, I don't know Whoa. if Tyson is in much better shape. Is he allowed to use steroids? Like it's, it's, it is. Something. No, Mike Tyson's washed in that he can't compete 
with other heavyweights. Other boxes, like other yeah, other professionals. Yeah, that, that's quiet. It's been quiet for that. Y'all right. saw his last fight? It's been quiet. All right, so it's like Jake Paul can't be. But is Jake so the whole... What about, the what about all this shit about, like, because I don't know. I don't know if it was a rumor or whatever, but they were saying some stuff about the contract. Like, he, like Mike Tyson gets paid by round. Like by, like, nah. That's not true. Okay. That's not true. I mean... If he wanted to, Mike Tyson could do that. But why would he want to get paid by round? That sounds stupid. To well, what they were saying player. that in Jake's favor that he wanted they, that he put that in the contract that Mike gets paid by round, so it would make Mike kind of hesitant in knocking him out early. So in your words, cash. In, in your by your logic or how you view things, we're not going to see the contract. That's what I said. Right? Like I didn't know if it was true. Somebody I seen it online. No, no. But but what I'm saying is, true. what I'm saying, the fun is the conjecture. Is this fake? Is this real? Right. That's what they're They know the world is going to be on that. Right. They right. know. The, but no, it's a regular contract. Okay. And I think they even came out to say it's a sanctioned real bout as well. So okay. like it's it's going to go on their, their on record, record and all that shit. Oh, all right. Not that's that cool. it matters. Like I know why right. people think that's such a big deal. Like so, Floyd did, um, what you call them, uh, exhibitions and knock niggas the fuck out in the exhibitions. So, matter of fact, Tyson did an exhibition. And knocked the nigga out by mistake. I didn't even know that. Got like he knocked him out, and it was like, oh shit, my bad. And then like held him and like helped him back up and shit. So yeah, so your the official way you calling the fight for all our sports betters out there. How, how you calling? Them? If Mike Tyson, what Mike Tyson, what fifty eight, something like that. Yeah. Mike Tyson on all the best steroids. If Mike Tyson comes to fight Jake Paul. I don't believe Jake Paul has the skill to defend himself against Mike Tyson. If Mike Tyson lets him keep the distance, then Jake Paul might knock him out. But I don't think Mike Tyson is going to let him keep the distance, and I don't know that Jake Paul has the skills necessary to um, stop Mike Tyson from when doing what he fight? wants to do. I think it's July. next month. Damn, this man know everything. Y'all need to get him on camera. <laughs> man. How you know the Mike Tyson fight date? Word. You see, yeah, hey, go more props to you. What's his name? H. H. Yeah. Shout outs to H, man. So, um, I got a question for you. It's a funny question, but I'm dead serious, right? Yes, sir. But you being our, the don't quote me fight expert now. Word. Right. Since we call come from this battle rap background, right? uh huh. Who do you think are the top five battlers that can fight? <laughs> <laughs> Most of them can't fight at all. Most of them can't fight a lick. But it's a different. I don't judge people on the scale of professional fighters because i've seen so many professionals everybody going to make a fucking mistake even me i've been training since i was a kid if i got up right now and had a fight without any real you know going over it i'm gonna make mistakes so i don't i hate when people get on videos and be like both of these niggas can't fight and somebody knocked another nigga out i'm like shut up hating my nigga like right. like are you fucking roy jones are you you Anything could happen. Right? shut up yeah and when you something about fighting that people don't understand it's distance control and fucking impact. If I can if I can control the distance from you, if I can make it so you can't hit me and I can hit you when I want to, I win. It doesn't matter how much technique I got. You know what I'm saying? So bring a nigga in here, set, bring fucking bowl bowl in here. <laughs> nigga can't fight a lick. But I dare you try to touch this nigga. That nigga gonna jump back so fast <laughs> and jump forward so fast that his arm's so long. That nigga might not knock Mike Tyson out and shit. You know what I'm saying? Not for real, but maybe. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I look at the battle rappers, I'm not judging them from the scale. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's a couple of ones I saw get busy in front of my eyes. I saw uh, Hitman Holler. Hitman Holler got a lot of motherfucking stats on you niggas. You battle rappers better get busy out here. <laughs> this, nigga, <laughs> this nigga could play basketball. This nigga <laughs> on fucking TV every day. Y'all niggas want to be mook. Y'all should be trying to be Hitman Holler and shit, <laughs> And a nigga can fight. Like, at a certain point, you know what I'm saying? I seen, we was on stage in Canada, right? Oh, yeah, I was there. You was there? <laughs> we, yeah. Nigga, y'all, fucking battle rap leagues. This nigga, they tried to suppress the footage. I ain't even, I almost got into a fight because I was doing the footage. And nigga walked up on me and said, we don't do that up here. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> almost fucked him up off yeah, of that. You but you told that nigga to move. <laughs> I told that nigga he was drunk. He said, like, I don't drink. I said, no, nigga, you're drunk. <laughs> but um, we was on stage, right? Uh, I was off stage. Uh, him and I was on stage. And he said this line about, if show out hit you, you're going to fly across. You're going to fly. What'd he say? 
slide across the stage yeah if shogun hits you you gonna slide across the room if i hit you i'm gonna slide knock you across the room and the crowd went crazy some uh toronto man eh? hopped on stage <laughs> right and from time fam you hopped on stage fam <laughs> yeah nigga hopped on stage right in the middle of this nigga rapping right this nigga show off look like what the fuck show off did he, like show, show off out. took us oh what's his name yeah, show out. shout out the show out took a second hit that nigga the nigga literally slid back five feet this nigga uh it looked like hitman didn't even want to hit him but since his brother hit him he had to hit him i think his whole hit bow knocked the nigga off the stage i said oh shit the nigga lived his rap he gotta be number one i don't care what you tell me he gotta be number one all right number two i'm gonna go with matt hoffa uh, you can say what you want. When a nigga connect with a nigga, they seem to be doozy. All right, he uh, he didn't knock out. What's the first dude he hit? Dose. Dose. He hit dose with a good one, right? But it was a little off balance. He was leaning back and he hit him like that. You know what I'm saying? But when he hit uh, what's from, from Jersey? Serious. Serious Jones. When he hit Serious Jones, nigga, you know what I mean? he I seen the Tweety Birds flying around. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go with. Math Hoffa number two. Shout outs to you, my nigga. You in barbershops. You giving niggas fades for a podcast now. All that. Number three. That's when it gets a little tricky, my nigga. Oh, but I know, but see what I'm saying? I only could go by the people I saw in front of me. Now listen, I met Swave. Swave is an imposing figure, my nigga. And he looks <laughs> like he looks like he could do all that shit he be rapping about, my nigga. He'd be like, yeah, I do the shoulder gun and my hand moves here and then go there. I seen him one time he was training disaster one time in Miami. Disaster was he disaster was like, yeah, I'll hit him like this and then I'll hit him like this and I'll hit him like this. And Swave was like, nah, you gotta breathe. You gotta breathe in between them. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, he sound like you know what he's talking about. But I never seen Sway fight though. Right. So I gotta give it to the ones. So that's why I say it's a little tricky. Cause I seen disaster hit math with a good one. Math ain't fall to his credit. I'm, I'm gonna tell you some real shit. Yeah. Sway kicked a nigga so hard, he he transported under a car. The queen of the <laughs> He transported yeah. under a car. Yo, some niggas was 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 heckling somebody that was with him, mm -hmm. and some shit broke out, and Swave kicked the nigga, and he kicked him under the car. Mm. All right, that's okay. it for me. So you want him in the, in the number three spot, man? Yeah. Look he at might, this nigga. I, I, I might. He might be in the one spot. Biased media ass nigga. <laughs> you ask me my question. You trying to reshape my kind of five? Nah, I'm gonna give it to Swave then, cause I'm. I believe he could do all the shit he said. I just never saw it. So I get Swave number three. I'm gonna get disaster number four. He hit he hit Matt Hoffa with a couple clean ones. You know what I'm saying? Matt Hoffa was seeing the Tweety Birds. He didn't fall. Disaster pushed him to the ground. That's not really, you didn't really drop him. You pushed him. It is what it is. And then I seen Disaster fight this other dude in this um um like no name battle or whatever. And he hit him and did the same thing and kept pushing him. I was like, why you keep pushing this nigga? Like, back up and hit this nigga. So, but he get the number four spot. Number five. I don't know, man. I don't know. I seen a couple fights, but none of them really. Remember when Goods fought the one dude? Oh, Jims? Yeah. That didn't, that didn't count. He could get put on the worst fighter list, Jims. He need a redo. He need to get another fight, man, because that was looking bad. No, we don't want to see that. Right, I'm out of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, twerk. get into this one. Oh, twerk. 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 Mm. That's, that's, that's a tough fight. On he did put the beats on. Um, the young that's a big name. that was tough but yeah i might have to give it to i might have to give it to my man new for jersey, beating jersey. up norbs yeah shout outs to new jersey you know what i'm saying shout that's, out to jersey. that's what's going on um, also i seen uh arsenal line some shit up too can i get an honorable mention oh at the cannabis joint yeah <laughs> <laughs> arsenal shout outs to jersey you know what matter of fact we had to let's move disaster out put uh more jersey niggas in there nah 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 we'll keep it the same shout outs to him jersey niggas represent uh, yo, Rain, something um, we was talking about earlier, right? So, um, with all this battle talk with with the Drake and Kendrick, we've been doing all our top 10 lists and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and we wanted to do something different today, where a lot of people, when you say, yo, who's the top 10 rappers? They give you the general public consensus, consensus top 10. You want to hear Jay-Z, Tupac, Nas, da 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 But if you take away album sales, you take away impact, and you just go off of 
who's your personal top 10 to just listen to mm. that you want to shout out because you feel their level of skill or you feel like they should have been somewhere else or they should be held somewhere where the general public doesn't hold them what's your 10. so the bias mm. top 10 is what you're saying your personal bias you saying want to pop it you yeah, yeah. Hey yo, um, hey yo, 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 yo. Well, yeah, come on. Hey yo, you said we saying act no accolades. Fuck that, just taste level. Pull. Yeah. Yo, yo, you want to pop it and taste level? It's <laughs> a, 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 that's an edit. <laughs> y'all kill. Nah, you gotta lead them shits in, buddy. Pause, yeah. man. Pause. What are pause, nigga. Pause. Yeah, pause. It's pause, getting nigga. crazy. Up here. <laughs> right. I'm saying, you can't be edited on. That's half the fun, man. Yeah. All right, so. Oh my god. My top, my number one artist still stays the same. Who? Nas. Nas is to me is the greatest rapper of all time. We're not all time. We're Come just, on, for me. We're just it's, ten, it's my like opinion, nigga. Ten, yeah. Top number one of all time. Uh, all you time. ain't gotta specify <laughs> all time. I gotta specify that. Just, just you know say saying? Cause ten, get left God. out a lot of conversation. You want to say five? It's, it's going. I'll do five. 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 Yeah, five. Yeah, ten five. is OG. Okay. So top top five rappers. That yeah. you currently get in the if I get in the wheel with you, this that's what I'm listening to. Come, you know, forget sales, I, forget just fuck, impact fuck all on the that. game. Who I think is yeah. good. Who's the five do you like? Nas is incredible to me. Still mind blowing. Anytime I hear his catalog, um, MF Doom is incredible. Um, the girl in the crowd said, "Who the fuck is that?" Yeah, MF Doom. Um, most deaf. Shout out, same. extremely underrated. Um, classics like, uh, fuck, Stat yes, ecstatic, one of the greatest albums yes, of all time. Eight. Yeah, I am. Um, Scarface. Mm. Shout out, Scarface. I got Scarface in my top five. <sighs> and um, fifth spot. The fifth spot is always tough. It's difficult. But I'm gonna just keep it a buck. I got 50 in my top five. Like, if you, like I listen to 50 damn near every day in the gym. If I'm in the gym, I'm listening to 50. I, 50 all the time. I don't, I have a What's, what's your favorite playlist. 50 song? My favorite 50 song? Solo, yeah. Solo, man. That's different. I love Many Men. Like, it's, it's kind of tough to, like, make a better record than Many Men. My favorite 50 song is the opening track on his second album. In my get screwed their face up at me. That's in my workout workout playlist. I you know, can't lie. Beef. I can listen to that yeah. over and over. Just that beginning part. part. That shit is so tough. Cool. Writer is how I feel about when I listen to 50. <laughs> yeah, like 50 is like one of the greatest songwriters of all time. Yeah, like, thanks. He, and he changed the way we I listen to music. Like I'll be guessing. Prior, that, right? prior to 50, prior to 50 was like everybody had three verses and a hook. 50 changed that shit up. Like two right. verses, a bridge maybe, intro. Melodic hooks. Facts. Like he changed the structure. Why do you think? Why do you think he fell off? Because I feel um, like his his writing acumen never really did. Yeah, I think I think um a lot of times it's what we don't notice as like a regular consumer. So I'm a writer and I'm a producer and mix engineer. So mm -hmm. the quality fell off, and sometimes we don't notice it as like an average listener. Uh -huh. And him not being with Dre, kind of lowered the quality of the music. Mm. Just the sonics isn't the same. And even though you energy. can't put your finger on it, it's like something's not right. This isn't knocking as hard as in the club, or this isn't knocking as hard as many men, mm -hmm. or even the whole massacre album, top to bottom, Yo, the documentary I, album. I, I know what it was, honestly, bro. Because if if you count Power the Dollar, I can argue with you that Fifty had the potential to have four classic albums, right? Right. And what I think is, when In the Club came out, uh, the public reception to it was was so great. And he was getting international fans of all different backgrounds, right. colors, creeds. You know what I'm saying? And I think his team tried to replicate that success on multiple albums. And people, when, I remember when Amusement Park came out, right? People were like, yo, why don't you just rap like 50? Ooh. Why are you trying to get these like white club hits or these like, overseas the club hits? Like if, if you take those songs that didn't resonate with his core fan base off of those albums, which is probably like three of them, Per album after Get Rich or Die Trying, the songs are crazy. Like you know, like Baltimore Love thing. But that's like, like that's like the second album. That was joint. crazy. Candy no, no, Shop. Second album, I think, is a classic. Candy, album, candy right. Shop is one of the most disappointing songs I ever heard. Yeah, I didn't like Candy. I didn't like none of the singles off the Massacre. I didn't like Candy Shop. I didn't like Disco Inferno <laughs> or just a little bit. You could have took them joints. Off. But I love the rest of the album. Did you like Batman and Robin? I skipped that. It was that entertaining, moment. but it wasn't. It was nothing I need to hear again. 
It was like that was like a double album, really. Mm. It's like twenty three songs on that album. It was crazy. There was quite a few on Get Rich or Die Trying too. Yeah, but Get but Rich he, or Die he Trying added tracks that a, had already yeah, been out, but been still. a double album. Mm. He put out a lot of music, man, in a very short period of time, and it was like really, it was good shit. I mean, mm-hmm. when you put out that much music, you're gonna have some bullshit. Which speaks to why niggas go get writers and shit. But right. and I'm gonna tell you something else. Fifty did where he kind of like shot himself in the foot. He started playing the numbers game. Like with the whole Kanye thing? Just in general. Like yeah. we never talked about that before in hip hop. That was never a conversation like, yo, how much so and so did this week. We never cared about that as fans. Mm-hmm. Like now you have fans locked into that concept of yo, he only did a hundred thousand this week. He only did fifty thousand. That was never a conversation in hip hop. We didn't care. Yes. He kind of introduced that concept and then couldn't live up to the numbers that he was saying was the standard. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does, definitely. But um I know I don't think he I don't think artistically I don't think he fell off because even like the, the shit he does for like the shows the intros and shit yeah I was gonna say fire. the power intro yeah, like, he still can write he still, still can he still can find a melody and a beat yeah like, uh, yeah it yep. is what it is people yeah. gotta get old P who's your uh, top five now your t- your personal five that you like oh if you get in the wit with me you gonna hear Fred the Godson rest in peace my mm. you gonna hear. West Side Gun. Mm-hmm. You gonna hear Jim Jones. You gonna hear Stove God Cooks. Mm. And you gonna hear Hove. Those are five. I niggas. agree with the last two. What you got? Uh, man, I'm a type of person that lets things go. So like, you would have asked me a certain period of time, I would have said Red Man immediately. They, that was like nigga who basically raised me and shit as far as like musically or what, how to even construct a rap or a punchline or whatever. But, um, you know, he fell off. So I don't know if you're getting a whip with me right now, who you going to hear is probably like, you're going to hear Jay-Z. Funny enough, uh, DMX's first album, to me, I still play most of the tracks off of there. So you're going to hear DMX. Um, I got to shout out Beanie Siegel. Cause I thought he was the best rapper for about three year period. I thought he took it over from Hove, but um, I'm not playing him much now, to be honest with you, man. So, um, who I'm playing now? You gonna hear them Griselda niggas? Just indiscriminate. Like I'm just gonna put it on their playlist no, and like no. let some of them the the beats knock too too heavily. Um. And then, uh, shit. I, I feel like he disqualified himself, but, you know, I, I, I can't even stomach. I couldn't even listen to his last album because of what he did. But J. Cole was a person you were probably here before, like, the month of March. And, um. <laughs> the apology ruined it for you? It ruined a lot for me, dog. So, no, like, half of this shit is. Looking, looking like, in the hindsight, you don't think it was a good move? The, what would have been a good move to me was just shut up in the first place. If you didn't want to battle, just don't battle. Don't don't right. make a record. You put you wrote it, you produced it, you mixed it, you mastered it, you put it out. And it almost seems like it was part of his plan because of the way he titled the album. Mm. But I just, I come from a certain ilk, as we all do. And it's just, imagine a nigga just quit in the middle of a battle or say his mm. first verse and be like, you know what, I'll, I'll take it back, I apologize. Mm. It's just, that's, I can't respect it. I get it. I hear all the excuses, but you just shouldn't have signed up. Shouldn't have mm-hmm. put your name in the hat. You should have just took the little bars, the little jabs on like that, kept it moving. But um, before that, you would have heard some J. Cole. He's got some incredible verses. I mean, I'm not going to hate on him. Like, his run between, like, 2019 up until March of 2024, he was killing every feature. He hopped on the track with Benny. And to me, it took looked like he took a couple jabs at Benny. He's like, just because you rap about drugs don't mean his bars or whatever he said. He get on a... To me, what makes an album an album or artist an artist is being able to cross over to different sounds. So the club, he could hop on a club beat, radio beat, a beat for women. He could do everything, which I think that's what makes Jay-Z the best because he used to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, H, we found out the one thing you don't know. I thought you knew everything. <laughs> the one thing you're wrong about. Um, but yeah, so J. Cole, and then um, you're right. The fifth one is that awesome. was the fifth. That was your fifth one. That was the fifth yeah. 
Oh, I said Beanie Siegel? Yeah. yeah. I bet. Um, with me, I'm gonna I'm gonna take five mostly unpopular opinions. Um people that I like listening to. First of all, my favorite rapper of all time is Sean Price. Mm. You know what I'm saying? His the way he makes nice he, he makes comedy with, with with the struggle with the streets. He was funny, but he wasn't funny at the same time. And even his wordplay, love it to death. Two, like if I ever had to sit down and write a rap and I needed inspiration, I wanted to hear high level rhyming, I immediately go listen to Elza. Oh, Elza's dope. I, I, I feel like Elza. If, if if forget accomplishments and everything, if you take away everything and you just hear people rap and you say who's nice, I feel like you can argue that Elza is one of the top 10 people that ever touched the mic. You know what I'm saying? Just from a skill standpoint. Um, another one, my, my third would probably be Black Thought. Black Thought is, 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 is just Black impeccable. Thought. Like, I got a story about Black Thought. Um, me and my brother were in Houston and I met this promoter that was like, yo, come out to the show. You and your brother can come for free. Bring whoever you want. We booking Black Thought. So basically, I guess there wasn't really a crowd for Black Thought in Houston at that time or whoever didn't do a good job uh, promoting the show. So it was only like 15 people there. So because of that, I got to sit there and just stand next to him and hear him rhyme and just talk to him the whole night. I think that like, I hate going to rap shows because when I go, what I year was like this? people don't, man, this is probably like 2013, 2014. So I, I hate rap shows because I feel like a lot of rappers don't know how to perform. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I don't even care if I like you. I don't want to stand there and hear that. But Agreed. I, I stood there five feet away from this man and watched him just hold the microphone. And, and his voice sounded like it was the instrument on the song. Yeah. And I was like, damn. Like, like just like the breath control. You know what I'm saying? And everything he had. Like, that was one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in my life. So I say him. Uh, Benny the Butcher is probably who I listen to the most right now. I love Tanner Talk um, 3, really did it for me. And um, fifth, I know a lot of people love him, but it's Jada Kiss, man. Mm. Like, I, I still listen to Jada like the day he came out, yo. Dope. Top of the food chain. It's just the way that I do things. The dungaree seats and the blue rank. Psh, yo. Dope, dope. Who won between him and Benny, though? Tell the truth. Beans. That's not really right history. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Tell the truth, my nigga. Right now, on the Tell the Beans, truth. Beans won. Oh, okay, but yeah, yeah, Beans won. But that, that ain't got nothing to do with me listening to J. Nah, move on. We can move on. Now. I just had yeah. to make sure. Yeah, but let's let's do um one more topic before we get out of here, man. This is a funny one, right? So we're gonna do another top five real quick, right? So <laughs> if you go into the if you go into the cookout, right? You go into the cookout, right? Yeah. Let's say you got let's say you got some white homies, right? You go into the cookout and you telling people, yo, you need to open up your ears to all genres of music, right? What's the top five white people songs that you putting people on to at the cookout, man? What? Oh, I'm telling my black friends this? Yeah, yeah. You go uh, to your black friends saying these are the top to five songs white that shit. white people love that you need to hear if you want to say you know anything about music. So I don't you cause at first I thought you meant like you got a DJ at the white party. No, and I gotta play no, five I'm songs. I'm that talking they about. Like. I'm, I'm talking about from your perspective. So songs like, that I know is white as hell, but I like anyway. But you like that's hard. They did their thing. That's easy for me because I grew up watching MTV, so I've seen a lot of. It's pop it all, man. Okay, you got first of all, first and foremost, if you're gonna do white songs that you gotta listen to that inspire black songs too, what well, uh shit? I don't be knowing the names and shit, but um. Uh, what's my man? He died. They made a movie about him. Um, I'm just like I'm playing taboo right I now. I need more than that. <laughs> he died. He died. He died. died, died they made a movie. Died, <laughs> died died movie. Queen. He was the uh, lead Freddie on Mercury. Queen, Freddie Mercury. Yeah. yeah, that song. It was in the first time I ever heard it was in fucking. Uh, what song you talking about? Hold up, I gotta get this. You want me to say it? Yeah, say it. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes. Yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody, greatest one of the greatest songs ever written. All right, Bohemian Rhapsody. Um. That's actually true, yo. No doubt. Incredible. No Talk question. Music, musical facts. Movement. Actual facts. Yeah. All right? I seen it in uh, Wayne's World. Wayne's World. There's a scene in Wayne's hey, World absolutely. where they, they add the fucking light and the shit come on. They just all singing a song. That's just yeah. how this shit go. But That's um, and then I would have to put up the uh Californication by um uh what's the nigga's name? Give it away, give Red it away. Hot Chili Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, Californication. One of the best songs ever written in life. Um, and then I'm going to go with 
uh, Walk by Pantera. Now, I know all you y'all don't. three? Five. He cheating, God. <laughs> <laughs> Who, me? No, 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 no. I really wasn't. Man. Yo, I'm crying. Niggas on his phone Googling. I sing, I sing the songs that I like. Nah. I sing the songs that I like. You I it, lyrics. Well, you was, if you ride in the car with me, you might hear these songs mixed right. in. That's right. how much. Right. You go over there. Songs that black people should like. <laughs> <laughs> Stan. <laughs> Hi, my name is. <laughs> Yo. The way I am. I think it's an eight mile sound check. You can lose nice. yourself. That's a fact. That's five. But what was the song? You lose said? yourself in you. I don't even know about Pay so so. You probably know if you ever seen RVD wrestling at ECW, then you know the song. If you, you ain't. PC. But yeah, yeah Pantera walks. <laughs> but I already know why it hits it. You just getting the names, right? The titles? I got my names. I bet. Yeah. Uh. It, shout outs New Jersey, you know what I'm saying? It, um, what's how this shit go? Uh, fuck, we know everything. Bon Jovi, Bon Jovi, the Young Gun soundtrack. What the fuck is the song called? Blaze of Glory. Anytime I go to a uh, karaoke, I'm doing Blaze of Glory every single time. Nothing else. I refuse. No Bruce, no Bruce. No Bruce mm. Mm. I only know a couple songs from him though. But shout outs to New Jersey. Yeah, you know I mean, fucking Bon Jovi got the album titled New Jersey. Um, and then the fifth one, shit, I don't know. Probably like, uh, we need one more. Probably like Jimi Hendrix, my nigga. Let, his, let, his, let Mr. Jimmy Google himself. Yeah. I ain't got shit. You like Jimmy go ahead. Hendrix. Go ahead. Now you go. You yeah, go, Jimmy Hendrix is black, but he did rock music, man. Nah, I'm talking you ain't got people. five. You ain't got five white. You, people. you don't know t five Jimmy Hendrix songs. You don't know five Jimmy Hendrix white people songs. You named the blackest man on the list. <laughs> well, I mean, the whole shit is ours. We created the you whole genre Hendrix. of shit. So, I mean. Yeah, Jimmy Hendrix is black. Man. You didn't even name a song. You but y'all, so how, right, how many I got times five. I got five. Yeah. Can I go White Mike? White Mike. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Like Michael Jackson. Do, 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 do. This, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. But go ahead. No, no. <laughs> my first, my first, my first um pick is gonna be Queen also. But I'm gonna go. Um, that's actually Wayne's brothers. I do like Bohemian Rhapsody. I feel like that's got to be on everybody's list. That's that's such an incredible record. I ain't say none of my shits yet. I have no idea what you're gonna say, bro. I'm, I'm like really wondering. But but um, I don't know I'll why I said it's in my Iverson. tongue and I can't think of it. Oh, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Queen, but I'm gonna go another one. Bites the dust. Okay. Oh no, that's fire. I love that record. That's I feel fire. like it's the best, one of the best mixed records in history. Right. Yeah. I love that shit. Right. That song is fire. Um, I'm gonna go Billy Joel. Mm. In the river of the night, mm. I go walking in my sleep. Talk that. I shit. love that record. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna go um. Frankie Valley, mm. begging, mm -hmm. begging, begging you. Oh, reach your love and I want to redo mine. Nah, that's over. That's over. So I'm going to go those. I'm going to go um, that's four? Fleetwood Mac Dreams. Mm. Oh. Uh, that's super white. I didn't know. Dude, he was acting like he didn't know. I, he came with it. Nah, that Google know everything. No. <laughs> <laughs> producer, by the way. Like, can I, yeah, I'm a producer. Is, nah, yeah. No, one. you went super right when you said Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, Fleetwood Mac James is crazy. And um, it's a great video if you never saw it when like Michael Myers like dancing to the song on Instagram and went viral. It was fucking funny. Um You had to watch that video to get in PC's game, man. That was part of the recruitment, man. You seen <laughs> my, watch Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen in the That James was initiation. Bloody it's Mary crazy. Is bad from by yourself. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Man, I'm trying to think number five. That That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what oh, number five. This is easy. Um, Bobby Caldwell. That's the do one for, I wanted to redo. What you don't do. That don't count though. Do Cause he made that for black audiences. But he was he's a white man. Niggas didn't even know he was black. I mean he was white at the time. Yeah, that's crazy. That's they kept they purposely kept him off the cover. The incredible second. record. Yeah. And the joint um the the um Biggie sample for Sky's the Limit. Mm. It's Bobby Caldwell also. I can't remember the name of the record though. 
to P, what you got, man? I, I really want to know what you're about to say. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm like highly anticipating this moment, yo. Listen, only white artist I listen to is Drake. <laughs> <laughs> yo. That's crazy. Yeah. So you want me to name five? Yeah, okay. <laughs> but they got to be for white audiences, though. Nigga got to say Hotline Bling. And shit. It got to be the white records. Yeah. What's like the white records, though? Hotline Give Bling. One. Give us one. White anything anything off that trash <laughs> ass album? Hotline yeah. Bling. <laughs> Anything off that trash ass album he had with all the other. I'm gonna be honest with you. Dance Hotline with you. Bling is one of my favorite Drake songs. I love that shit. That's crazy, mm -hmm. right? Out of all the songs he made, like Hotline Bling to me was so creative. It's probably reminded you of where you was when you first heard it. No, I just randomly heard it. It was like, yo, this shit, what the fuck is this? That's crazy. And I was I was so like confused about it at first. And I'm like Did you like the nigga song who he got it from? I never heard it. I never knew mm. some. He got it from somebody. Yeah, uh, the nigga who made that song, Broccoli. You sound like MJ. Oh, you talking about... Um, oh, Drum. Dude from Virginia, Drum. Yeah. Yeah. Drake supposedly took that song from... From Hot Broccoli? No, oh, from nah. a different record. Yeah, from yeah. a different record. The thing that... The song that blew up Drum, Drake did a version of that. They asked him about it. He's like, it's like a Jamaican. Everybody does a rhythm. Oh, wow. That's I like Drum, too. He's dope. I mean, he's not white. I mean, Drake's not white. Drake's white. Go on. Yeah. Kendrick taught us. Drake is white. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's not like us. Dirty white. So he's not like not us. Like Hotline Bling. What? It's over. This Just come on. We're going nothing. home. It's too easy. I can name five. Jordan. Just come <laughs> on. We're going home. <laughs> Y'all forget mine. But not. Nah, yo, I think. I'm gonna see if I can really do this. I don't know. So Bohemian Rhapsody. I don't care if everybody said it. Y'all still in my gonna, shit, B. I was gonna say that first. Get your own two. I got, got you with these other four too. I got uh, Sarah Smile by Holland Oates. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's right, that, but Dope. that's white. But baby, that's very white. But that's not, white. Not, you know what made me like it is when I heard uh, Babyface and his brothers. They have a group called After Seven. They version of Sarah Smile. When I found out it wasn't an original, I went and listened to the first joint. I was like, this is fire. Yeah, I can't lie. Hauling Oats is definitely in the uh, black people was when they was tuning the radio trying to get to the black station. <laughs> right. and shit, they stopped that Hauling Oats. Now I know I'm gonna get flamed for this. I think, correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is the Rolling Stones, but that song that's on every like built for a tough commercial when it's like come together right now. <laughs> oh, that's the Beatles. Oh, that's the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. The Beatles. Oh, forget that. Yo, the Beatles. That <laughs> joint. The Beatles, the Beatles is but crazy. Errol yeah. Smith, Errol Smith redid it. You should hear their version of it. Is that? Am I talking about the Errol Smith version? It's on. I don't know which commercial. The GMC. I don't know which commercial. I don't know which version you're speaking. It's about. on every uh, NFL commercial. It's a quick story yeah, how he wrote that. Right. He walked up to a politician. You talking about the Beatles or the Errol Smith? Beatles. They the people who wrote the song. Uh, the nigga from the Beatles. I forget which his name is. Paul McCartney. He walked up to you this politician. I had to take a second to remember, right. my nigga. Glasses ass nigga. Yeah, nigga. Nose and glasses came in the same case and shit. So <laughs> he walked up to the politician and said, yo, I support you. What can I do to help you? He's like, oh, you could write a song for me. And he said, sure. Well, he's like, tell me what you want the song about. He's like, I just, just tell the people, to, just tell them to come together. And he wrote that song, nigga. I'm not going to lie. I think I like the Aerosmith version. Now I'm thinking about it because I don't like the Beatles. Nigga, you ain't going to step on my story. I just Excuse told me, you sir? this nigga wrote a whole like song. You don't like the Beatles? Every time I sit down and listen to the Beatles, I'm like, ew. That's a known I thing. As a producer, let me ask you this question. A lot of people say the Beatles could write the hell out of a song, but they instrumentation. They couldn't play music. So a lot of black artists at the time wasn't fucking with them at all. A lot of the, their peers weren't fucking with them at all. I mean, like they I, would just write guess, songs so good. I guess like by the time I heard the Beatles, they were already like a legendary group. Oh, they so definitely I didn't, legendary. I didn't really hear if about you, that. If you didn't know they was legendary and you just picked up a random record and listened yeah, to I it. Yeah, I think they were dope. But I would the Beatles hate it, dope, man. I hate it. I hate them. I like the but every time I like a song and I'll be like, yo, this song's fire. Then I find out and they you wrote find it. Out it's the Beatles. I was yeah, like, oh, I got to give them they just do. Yeah, that kind of crazy, bro. But yeah. I, I say, yo, you know what's the girl song? belonged to Michael Jackson though. Let's be honest. Though. You know what might be the one white people song that all black people, including PC, probably know every single word to. What? What's that? Is uh, "Hey Now You're an All Star" by Smash Mouth. That's wild. Hey, yo, crew, yo, anytime I've been somewhere, no matter where I was and it came on, I see mad people just. This nigga just accused you of knowing lyric. every lyric of this. You song. know that song, right? 
Hey now, you're an all star. You never heard that joint? Is it by Drake? Oh my god, yo. Yo, let me show you how you get this nigga. He likes, I know you like, we will, we will rock you. You ain't never did that? You ain't never did the beat? Never did that. This nigga was born on the block selling drums. That's it. That's <laughs> nigga selling drums? Nigga's <laughs> 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 just born on the block just selling drugs and shit. Like, all right. I thought you said drums. I was trying to say Are we junk. not going to do like, are we not going to shout out like Phil Collins in the air tonight? The air tonight. I was going to get there. And I was going to get, and I was going to get the, uh, I was going to get the piano man. Mm. Piano man. That's a classic song, but I don't know if I fuck I with it. Know. That's Billy um Joe. the gay dude. Oh, Billy Joe. Piano? No, Elton John. No, Elton John, my fault. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Shout outs to- Wait, uh, he's going to no be killing Marie, us. And he, and no and he's, yo, shout outs to the intro to the one. Tina Marie was black, by the way. Yeah, Tina Marie don't count. When she got signed by Cash Money, it was over. Yeah, it was over. <laughs> yeah, Rick, Rick James, the Cash Money. Yo, that's like, crazy, yo. Yeah, it's wild. Shout outs to John B. Oh, John B. <laughs> yo, yo, John, John B. Might, John might be on the list. Like, I just always assume he was light skin because his barber was real good. <laughs> like I can't remember a John B. song, but I know they don't know. The fuck they don't, they don't know. It was like the quintessential singing, singing, singing a note. From don't me. listen to what people say. They don't know about about you and me. That's John B. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that nigga the goat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was John B. Yo, but you know, but yo, fucking song. yo, but actually, you know what? You know what's the greatest white uh, song of all time? Don't quote me, nigga. Mm. 